Hello guys and welcome to the Mtech HDMI synthesizer unboxing and tutorial. Uh, for this device you're going to need three HDMI 2.0 plus and I actually recommend you to have HDMI 2.1 plus supported cables. Uh, you may also use an adapter uh, such as HDMI to display port but please make sure they actually support the HDMI connection properly or you may run into issues. Inside the box, you're going to find the tutorial link, quality cer certification, the power cable, our USB A to USB C cable for firmware and EDID spoofing, and the Imtech synthesizer itself. Here's a rundown of the basic control systems. You got the power button, D1, D2, H2, and H1 lights, and then the K1 to K4 switches. The K1 switch is for rotating between resolutions. Your K2 is for a keying intensity, black level, and the K3 is just to switch the keying level to zero, default. K4 will switch between uh, the synthesizer turning function on or off and also holding down long will display the input. In the back you have the HDMI inputs, outputs, and type C as well as the power connection. HDMI 2 would be the top layer, HDMI 1 would be the bottom layer. The HDMI itself would be the output. The first thing you want to do is plug in the power to your Imtech synthesizer. So go ahead and plug it into your outlet and then into the 12 volt power supply. Next thing you want to do is go ahead and plug the base layer or your main PC's input to the HDMI synthesizer and then the output to your monitor and in for this setup you're going to need at least two monitors. Uh, while you're running the system you can use a singular monitor but for setup we require two so you can troubleshoot. After plugging both in make sure the PC and the monitor are both on and both on the correct output and input respectively. Once you power on you should see D1 turn on which means it's receiving power and H1 turn on which means the HDMI 1 or base layer is receiving the input signal correctly. Now you're going to use the K1 button to switch to the resolution you want and we'll have a list right on the screen of what resolutions you can switch to and in order. Holding down the K1 button will display on your screen what resolution in hertz you're using. If the HDMI synthesizer is failing to produce a proper output or glitching onto your monitor and you've made sure the monitor is checking for the correct input, please follow the next part carefully. On your second monitor that your PC should already be connected to, go ahead and go to the resolution settings scroll down to advanced display settings click on choose display and select the display uh, the HDMI tech is the VG27 go ahead and check the resolution and the refresh rate make sure those are correct for the output you're trying to produce if they're wrong go ahead and go to the adapter tab click on list all modes 
and choose the correct resolution in Hertz that you want to apply to your system. Once you've chosen the correct mode and resolution, go ahead and click OK and then apply. In this case, we're already at the correct resolution in Hertz, so there's no need to do this. Keep note of which display is your MTech combiner. Uh, here we have it at display 2. So we're going to go ahead and go back now that we've applied this. And the next step you want to do is to reduce latency. You want to make the HDMI tech synthesizer your main output. So go ahead and go down after selecting the display and select to make this my main display. The other thing you could do is instead of extending the displays after correctly fixing, you can load the display only on the monitor of your desire. In this case, you want to display it to the Imtech combiner. After applying the resolution and hertz changes on your PC, make sure to iterate through the K1 resolutions one more time to make sure it's applied. This should also solve any bugs that occur once you update the resolution in Hertz. When you first plug in your MTech combiner to your display uh, the, and hold down the K1 button, the resolution should default to 1920 by 1080 at 60 Hertz. To change this, go ahead and hit the K1 button again until you get the output of your dis the resolution of your desire. After iterating through the resolutions using the K1 button, and setting the hertz through the previous method we've shown before, we are now ready to go for input 1, which is our lower layer display or the main display you're going to be using. It's now time to plug in the second display input to the Amtech combiner. After you finished plugging in the second display input or the top layer into the Amtech synthesizer, all of the lights should be now on. D1 indicates the power light, D2 indicates the synthesizer function being on or off. If this is off, you can press the K4 button to turn it on. H2 is the HDMI input, and H1 is the HDMI 1 input. If your output is no longer displaying, or displaying with glitches, make sure to follow the previous step displayed on how to set the resolution and hertz of your output. 40 second PC. Once you hold down the K1 button, you should now show that it indicates the correct resolution and hertz of your desire. Congratulations, your Imtech combiner is now overlaying. Now that your Imtech synthesizer is functioning properly, we will do a quick demonstration on what each button does. Pressing the K4 button quickly will turn the overlay function on or off. While holding it down, we'll switch only to the HDMI output or the HDMI 2 output. K2 will change the keying intensity. There are 21 levels which go from 0 to 20. The greater the level, the larger the variation is of black light colors that are removed from the secondary layer to see into the primary layer or bottom layer. K3 resets the keying intensity to a default, which is zero. While holding down the K1 button will display the resolutions and hertz that are currently being used in the Amtech synthesizer. Congratulations, your Imtech synthesizer is now overlaying. Thank you for your purchase or interest in Immortal Tech products.